from Virginia Tech taking on Nicholas Solzer from Virginia. 165 Solzer, fourth in the nation at 165. You know a little bit more about their matchup earlier this season. Yeah, they uh, they met earlier in the season. Uh, Solzer came came away with a 12-3 victory. He's out fast with an early takedown. Back to Struby. It's 2 1. Solzer. Struby knocking off Troy Raygard from Pitt by a score of 5 to 3 this morning. Solzer with a nice shot of the single leg. Changes off to a high crotch, looking to finish now. Struby not giving that up, though. Souls are so strong, though. Two-time All-America at this weight. Third all-time in wins at UVA with 112. Yeah, he's, he's, he's had a great career at, at the UVA. And just really just a, a very fine young man. You can see he's up 4-1 uh, now with another takedown. Solzer, a redshirt senior from Cleveland, Ohio, St. Edwards. 24-2 this year. Actually, his updated record, 114 career victories, just 25 losses. That's really impressive. Anytime you can win over 100 matches as a college wrestler, uh, that, that, that's really impressive. He's, he's had a great career so far, and uh, I know he's really uh, looking forward to Doing well here in the ACC tournament, and then uh, two weeks in St. Louis, getting on that podium at the, at the NCAA tournament. Great student athlete, he's got his bachelor's degree in psychology, scheduled to graduate in May with a master's degree in higher education and administration. He's talking about Solzer, fourth in the country at 165 pounds, up four to one over Struby from Virginia Tech. He's already earned a minute of riding time, uh, a little less than a minute to go in the period. So we'll see whether he rides Truby out here or he may decide to um, go neutral again and, and try to get a third takedown. Truby 10 and 11, 4 and 2 in the ACC. Looks like he's really working hard on top here, trying to wear Truby down and make him carry his weight. There's a stall warning on Struby. Struby works up, though. Oh, Soldier's got a cradle locked. Uh, besides, maybe not this time. Soldier looking strong here with just seconds remaining in the first period and a 4-1 lead after one. Solzer got it started with a takedown, Joe. Yeah, he gets in on a good shot. Struby's looking to uh, scramble, but um, Solzer's just very, so, so good with finishing his shots. He gets in and he's very methodical about securing that far leg, getting his opponent's hip to the net to secure that takedown. Start the second period in neutral position. And banging just a little bit here. Yeah, you'll see guys by the end of this tournament, you'll see black eyes and bloody noses and all kinds of things uh, just from some of the incidental contact that, that happens during the course of the match. You might catch a head, you might catch a knee sometime. But these guys are warriors. They battle through it. talk about the strength of Solzer demonstrated there, throwing Struby away as Struby shoots, and it's now 5-1. What a great shot. He uh, he actually used Struby's momentum to make that takedown look easy. Right. 6-1, Solzer on top. Three automatic qualifiers, but that's not the end of the road necessarily, Joe. Explain that. The, um, 
So the, the NCAA allocates NC, uh, Division One qualifying wrestlers at each weight class. However, um, once all of the conference tournaments are finished, there are 70 at-large bids that are announced on March 11th. These at-large bids are uh, determined by um, a, a NCAA committee. Um, they basically look at a variety of different um, different criteria to determine who will those 70 qualifiers be. They base it on head-to-head -head competition, uh, qualifying event, placement, what they call quality wins, results against common opponents, winning percentage, RPI, and coaches' rankings. They, they put all those numbers together and uh, come out with uh, 70 at-large bids for wrestlers who, um, who didn't automatically qualify in their conference. Souls are here, really riding tough on top. Great work by Souls over on Matt One. It's Max Groskoff facing top seed of Ethan Ramos of North Carolina. Take a look here, another takedown for Souls. Watch how he sets this up. He he gets Scooby coming to him, and he just uh, just makes it look easy. He created an angle and an attack at the angle. I got a picture perfect takedown. Ramos leading over on Matt one by a score of 5 0. As we're looking quite possibly, still plenty of time, but at a Ramos Solzer matchup in the finals here of 165. Still plenty of time, though, for Chad Struve. Yeah, Solzer uh, working on bottom position again. He's very methodical, uh, he keeps very good position. See him control the hands and look to score on uh, the transition between positions. See Struby still in control. Referee called the stalemate. So Souls will start back down to the bottom position. Ahead 6-1, and he's already earned 2 minutes and 35 seconds of riding time. Struby looking to knock some of that riding time off and uh, possibly work with some kind of score here on top. I'll tell you that Ethan Ramos with a fall. Max Roscoff, NC State, so he'll move on to the finals. Yeah, he's, he's put on a real nice winning streak. Been one of the hottest wrestlers in the ACC over the past several weeks, so uh, should make for a very interesting final tonight. Side so Bobby Huntley telling me yesterday that just what you said, Ramos, not just in the ACC but in the country, one of the high climbers right now. Seven one here, those souls are on top. Seven to one. You know that's a that's a really great thing about wrestling. You see some of these wrestlers get ahead of steam, they get some momentum going at the end of the year, and they might have had some early losses during the year, but they forget all about, they forget all about that, and uh, you, know, you really will see some of these guys coming from nowhere and placing in the ACC tournament, winning the ACC tournament, becoming All-Americans, um, and so really, really neat to see. This work by Struby continued to try to fight, but not get away from the grasp of Solzer now with a 10-2 lead. Very similar to their earlier match, uh, Solzer with a 12-3 victory when they wrestled during the season. Looking like it's uh, going to end up about a 12-2 victory here. And again, important uh, important point here is Solzer also earns an additional team point for this major decision. Solzer with the MD, and you said 12-2 with that riding time. Another reversal here for Solzer. See Struby trying to uh, trying to take him to his back, almost in desperation. Um, didn't really work very well, and, and the experience of Solzer shines through. He makes it to the finals for a, a very highly anticipated rematch with uh, Ethan Ramos. All right. Going on to the 174-pound weight class. See Blaze Butler from Virginia getting set to take on the 
Virginia Tech's Zach Epperly, and we're underway already. Yeah, there's going to be some fireworks in this match. These two guys met earlier in the year. Uh, Butler actually came came away with a 3-2 victory. Lots of action, not a lot of points, but um, when these two guys go at it, we're expecting to see lots of action. Look at the national rankings as well, Joe. Number seven, number six. That's uh, These guys are very, very close. And I expect this match to be, to be decided by a point, maybe two points. Virginia Tech's Zach Epperly recorded a 16-3 major decision over Duke's Trey Adamson to advance to the semifinals. We're on Matt Warner beat John Michael Stoudenmire of North Carolina. Recorded a 3-0 victory. He's taking on Pitt's Tyler Wilts, who's number eight in the country. You know, it's really interesting. You look at the national rankings of these guys, number seven and number six in the country, and they're seated second and third in this weight class. Really a, uh, oh, nice shot. Nice shot takedown by Butler. Just a very explosive double leg takedown. So two points for Butler. Great call, Joe. As you mentioned, Wilps, though, he is your reigning ACC champion, winning this title a year ago. He's over on Matt 1, a Matt 2, Epperly and Butler. Butler up 2-0. I think we may see some, some points scored in this match. Here's the deal, Butler. He won the ACC championship at 157 pounds last year, qualifying them. He's moved up to 174. What about that jump? Yeah, he must have spent an awful lot of time in the weight room in the, in the offseason. You see that with some wrestlers where um, they don't really hit their growth spurt until they get in college. So uh, and just looking at his physique, it's evident that uh, both of these guys spend a lot of time in the weight room working on their strength and conditioning and, and uh, really allows them to be very explosive wrestling. But again, very good shot off of the re-shot. Well, you Epperly talked about that a, explosion. You saw it right there. Wow. Epperly had a nice shot on his own, and, and uh, Butler just caught him when he was coming up. So Butler a year ago, 22-8 at 157, winning the ACC. He's moved up a couple weight classes. He's still 17-3 with four pins. Yeah, these two guys these two guys are studs. This, uh, this is a very entertaining weight class. I think we mentioned earlier, this weight class actually has five qualifiers to the NCAA Division I tournament. So uh, this will be a unique weight class where they actually will wrestle to five places. Most weight classes uh, they'll wrestle to four places but this will be one where we'll, uh, we'll see an extra match. Where these guys will wrestle to five places. Just as we talked about earlier you win the semifinals you punch your ticket to the NCAA tournament. So it's a very important match for these wrestlers. Butler on top of Epperly, 4-2. to two, 40 seconds remaining here in the first period. Fighting hard, trying to get the other out of position. Butler carrying that 4 2 lead with uh, 49 seconds of riding time. Ever 21 and 5, 5 and 1 in the ACC this year. Great reaction. You see, Epperly almost has a takedown, and Butler just comes right back in. He was anticipating that shot, and uh, he, he scored off the re-shot. Butler, a redshirt junior. Epperly, a redshirt freshman. Epperly is from Christenburg, Virginia, went to Christenburg High School. With escape from, Rut from Butler, making it 5-2. So redshirt last year. Epperly was 29-2 and two unattached. Yeah, these wrestlers, when they redshirt, they're they're still competing. They compete in all kinds of events, and a lot of times will wrestle as many matches in their redshirt year as they wrestled uh, as if they were wrestling with the team during the season. Lots of motion from these two guys, trying to get the guy, the other guy, to react so that he can 
opened his stance up a little bit and was the score a takedown. Butler up 5 2. Everly really working hard here for a takedown. He's got a score here. If, uh, if Butler scores another takedown, that could make it really tough for Everly. Joe, when you It'll see Everly match. shoot right there, it also magnifies the speed of Butler, though, responding. Oh, he's a great like, athlete. He is like lightning. And you can tell he, he's got that focus in his eyes. He, he's waiting to attack. As Butler moves up two weight classes, looks like he could be on the football field for the Cavaliers. Yeah, I'll tell you, a lot of these, a lot of these wrestlers are phenomenal athletes. Look at that shot. That one, one beautiful textbook double leg takedown. And Spons, Butler. Seven two Butler. Seven three actually with the escape from Epperly. My bad. Seven three here with 15 seconds remaining in the second period. Butler just has that momentum. He he, he looks like he's on a roll in this match and, and is uh, ready for anything that Epperly can throw at him. A little hard hand fighting there at the end. How about the quickness here, though, of Butler? He is so quick on reaction. Look at that. Beautiful takedown. Cleared the hands, cleared the head. Again, I'd like to take a picture of that. That's a picture-perfect takedown that uh, you'd like to share with young wrestlers out there. This yeah. is how you do it, guys. It is. We have a front-row seat for all of it, basically, practically on top of the mat here. Great job by the crew at the University of Pittsburgh. Kelly Zitch, Jen Riley, the whole gang, Sean, 7-4 here, Butler on top by three. Butler feels very comfortable in the neutral position. He keeps moving. Every time he fakes, the other wrestler, his muscles tense up, and, and, and that tends to wear on you. You may not think that you're tying the guy out if you're not pounding on his head the whole match, but a lot of these guys will use motion to get that guy off balance and, and set up their shot, especially if they're as quick as Butler. He's giving a lot of reads, keeping good motion. Makes it hard for Epperly to track him down. Makes it hard, makes it hard to shoot. 7-4, give Epperly credit. Mentioned Butler had a lot of the momentum, but now Epperly finds himself down only three. Uh, attempt on a shot. Stalemate, we go back to the center. Referees use stalemate. Oh, a nice shot and a low single right off the whistle. Boy, it was so quick, it almost felt like it was before the whistle yeah. for Epperly. Now three to Butler. The stalemate. Let's see if he's going to try that again. That seemed to work last time. Steps back this time, though. Needs to go. He's down three. Epperly is to Butler. As you mentioned, the five AQs here from the ACC in this weight class. So, Blaze Butler. We'll move on to the finals of 174-pound division. Butler's speed on 